Sports Matters TV, bringing the sports home. How are you? I'm good, champ. How are you? How's things? Doing good. Doing good. That's good. So you've had a you've had a busy day at the gym. A lot of uh, a lot of boxing, a lot of sparring, I believe. Yeah, I had a lot of guys come from Alabama do a lot of sparring today. So I had a kid, uh, Money Powell, Ken Forward, Chris Eubanks, and Kevin Newman, uh, Glenn Hagler, a couple more guys. So. How's uh, how's Eubank doing? Obviously, we're hearing a lot about Chris Eubank and you. Uh, good fighter. Yeah, man. Listen, he is a improved so much already today he boxed he fought very smartly um he wasn't uh, just brawling going through the motion he was using his brain um been i've been very impressed with his progress awesome now roy speaking of uh, the whole trend inside the teens do you enjoy coaching obviously you've got a lot of experience you know you obviously enjoy the coaching side of things no, i love the coaching side of things coaching side of things is really fun because you get a chance to try to get these guys to um, perfect their their own uh, craft. You know, it's like I try to get them to get them teach them how to do the things I did and why I did them because they see it, they copy it, but they don't understand it. If they understand it, then they can do more with it, even than what I did. But if they see it and just copy it, that's no good. If you copy it because you understand it, you can take it to another level. If you don't understand it, copying does you no good. I understand. Now, Roy, speaking of your career, you've done it all, okay? You know, four different weights, yeah. you know, heavyweight, heavyweight champion, fighter of, of the year. Tell us, you know, how did it all start for you first day? Where did that passion for boxing come? Uh, I've come from watching Muhammad Ali. You know, when you watch a winner, it makes you want to be a winner. That's why I would try to prepare myself and try to perform as a winner because I wanted to inspire the kids the way Ali inspired me. Ali inspired me to be a winner because of his winning tradition and his winning ways. Uh, so that made me want to be a winner. And it turned into exactly what I was. Uh, I became a winner. And um, it was like, I mean, it was something unusual, something unseen and unheard of, but that's what Muhammad Ali was. So I had to carry the torch. Definitely. And you did that indeed. And obviously, you went up the ranks. You've done it quite fast. Obviously, you made, you know, the status of one of the pound for pound greatest fighters of all time. Tell us about that fight with James, Tony. It's one of the, you know, one of the best fights. I remember staying up watching that fight. But tell us, obviously, James, Tony, at the time, was a pound for pound king as well. What was it like to, to fight James, Tony, and be victorious? It was like one of the best days of my life. But at the same time, it was the day you all live for. We all live for the day to be able to have that test to find out who's the best. Uh, especially when you do something good or you're trying to be great at something, you want an opportunity to take the test to see who's the best. James Turner was my test to see who was the best. Because at that time, James was looked upon as the best, but I felt in my heart that I was the best. So it's like now the test comes down to this. He's looked upon as the best, I think I'm the best. Take the test and prove it. I took the test and I passed it, but that's to take nothing away from James Turner because James Turner was a bad boy and still is. So don't get it twisted. James was one of the best fighters I've seen, one of the best fighters I've competed against. And uh, people can say what they want, but uh, the dude is special. Um, he mastered Floyd Mayweather style before Floyd Mayweather did. Had more power at that style even than Floyd Mayweather did. Uh, he was a shoulder roll king, and he was knocking people out with the shoulder roll. And I, as fast as I was, had a hard time hitting him flush. I did, but I had a hard time. It wasn't easy. So that's why I was able to dethrone him, because I know how to deal with it. But had I not been equipped to deal with it like most people weren't at the time, I wouldn't beat James Jones. James Jones was a bad boy. No. Roy, speaking of all the weights, you went up so many weights, you know, to find all the odds, you know, made history time over time. Tell us about that heavyweight win, obviously becoming heavyweight world champion. That was huge, you know. I remember yet again staying up to watch that back in Ireland. Obviously, that's got to be one of the greatest achievements of your career. And yeah, that's probably the most, the, the greatest achievement of my career because even in my eyes, you know, when they tell you what God has planned for you, nobody, nothing nobody can do to stop it. I had no plans of being a heavyweight champ. I had no plans for ever even fighting in the heavyweight division uh, when I was coming up. And one night I had a dream. And I felt like that dream was God's will telling me, hey, 
you should go fight for the heavyweight title. So when I had that dream, I woke up and I started trying to pursue the heavyweight title. Uh, I called it down the whole field. He said no. I said okay. So I called. Uh, I then called him. But I went back to training camp. I fought uh, Clinton Woods. Uh, got from over your way. After the fight, um, I found out that John Reese either beat Holyfield in or he beat him shortly thereafter. And he said, I'll fight Roy Jones. I was like, how does he know I even want to fight a heavyweight? So he's like, yeah, I'll fight him. I said, yes, there he is. So, but it definitely was the most, uh, the biggest accomplishment of my whole professional career because Roy Jones dreamed myself, never dreamed until that night of even fighting as a heavyweight, let alone becoming a heavyweight champ. But God knows best because had someone told me, hey, you should uh, go try to see can you be a heavyweight champ, I'd have never done it. But because I was doing so much with what I was doing, I wiped out the middleweight division, wiped out the super middleweight division, wiped out the light heavyweight division, there was nothing else to do. So they said, you want to make, make history, make a mark in boxing? Because Bernard Hopkins went and got the most defenses of the middleweight title and broke that record. So I was like, well, you got to make history, how are you going to do it? The only thing I could do was go become a heavyweight champ. That's the only way for me to make, make history. But that's God's way of guiding me into what he wants me to do. So I did. And it was the biggest blessing, the best thing that ever happened to me. And how was the weight cut? I can only imagine trying to put on all that weight, but cutting the weight, did you find your hair cutting weight back then? Cutting that weight off was very, very difficult. So putting it on was a lot easier than cutting it off. Awesome. And we just have to ask you, obviously, there's, um, you, you've interlinked with UFC and Dana White. We're going to see some big stuff happen in the near future. Obviously, COVID-19 has put everything on hold. But are we going to see you fight Anderson Silva? I know you're retired and stuff. I know it's a fight you possibly want. Do you reckon we might see that fight? Because I want to see that fight. Yeah, I wanted to see it too, and I traveled so long. But I think uh, Dana didn't want it to happen. I don't know that Anderson wanted it to happen. But I do have some other stuff in the world right now. And they materialize. You may see me again in some form. I don't know if it'll be a real fight fight or if it's just be more of a sparring session. But there's some stuff in the making right now. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Awesome. Now, two quick questions, okay, just from fans. Adam wants to know, how close were you to fighting Steve Collins, the Irish fighter that was world champion? Was that fight very close to being made? Yeah, it was very close to being made. As a matter of fact, Les, when he came here, I was thinking about 98 or 99, I left, he and my lawyers were in the office together. They were supposed to make a deal. And something happened, and I don't never know, I never knew what happened. I thought he was going to fight because he came to Pensacola with, met with the lawyers and everything. I thought they had signed to a deal and we was going to get a fight, but nothing ever materialized. So after that, you know, years later, like as far as about a year and a half, two years ago, we were trying to make a fight, but that really, the money just wasn't there for it at that point. And we were too old to not be making a substantial amount of money if we go in the ring. Because and even when you're prime, when you go in the ring, every time you go in the ring, you're not prone to come out the same. But when you're beyond your prime, your chances are even less that you're going to come out the same. So if it's not substantial and worth the while, then you shouldn't do it. Definitely. And last question, Mike, because I know you're a busy man. Do you reckon Mike Tyson's going to come back and fight? He's going to come back. And fight. I don't know what kind of fighting they're gonna do or who he's gonna fight, but he's gonna come back and fight. He wouldn't say it if he wasn't planning on doing it. That's Mike. Mike mean what he say and say what he means. He may be a little crazy, but he says what he means and he means what he says. So if he says he's coming back, he coming back. Right. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to speak to you, my friend. Um I wish you all the best with your coaching and all your future ventures. You're a true legend of world boxing. Thank you very much for your time. It means a lot, champ. Thank you, my brother. See you soon, Roy. Thank you. Peace.